Hi everyone, and welcome back to part two of this two video introduction to dynamic mode decomposition or DMD. Um, we've seen in the video one that we want to study a system which may be nonlinear, which may be unknown, or which may be linear but very, very large, and we do not want to, you know, use the knowledge that we have, or we maybe do not have the knowledge, um, and use data instead. So what we did here is we said that we assume that there exists a matrix A that maps the kth or the state at time step k to the state at time step k plus one. So it's just a linear discrete time system mapping xk to xk plus one. And so if the system is nonlinear, this A obviously does not exist. So this loss function will not be zero. We, we have to make a mistake. But if we solve this minimization problem, then we get the best linear fit, so the best matrix mapping the columns of z, so xk equal one to xk equal n minus one to the same matrix, just every column mapped ahead one time step, so x2 until xn. And then we saw that this is actually nothing but a multivariate regression problem, so we have z dash times the pseudo inverse of z, and we're done. So it's easily computed, um, and then we get this matrix, and we can do all the nice stuff we have learned about linear systems, like decomposing this into eigenvectors and eigenvalues and infer information about stability, long-term behavior, and so on. The main issue though, um, this is obviously a linear approximation of a nonlinear system. It's not perfectly clear how much information is truly contained in, in, in the matrix that is also in the, in the original system. Because, right, you can have nonlinear phenomena that this matrix will never be able to, uh, to, to learn in a way. But still, it's a good approach, it's very easily done, and you can actually learn quite a bit, as we will see now. So, but here's the problem. Um, what if my state, this is x at time point t, is very high dimensional? So let's say this n was a million. Then, you see this is a quadratic matrix mapping x at time point k to x at time point k plus one. We do have a problem because a is a matrix that has dimension n by n. Right, so a million by a million, or even larger, right? So this is very, very costly. And so do we really need this? Um, this is the question that we would like to address here. And so to take away the, the, the answer, um, actually no, right? What we're interested in is the leading eigenvectors and eigenvalues, okay? So we want some dynamic structure of the system. So what we want is maybe not the matrix, but the eigenvalues and the associated eigenvectors that are of main importance, okay? So, and what this main means, uh, let's put this in parentheses, um, is a matter of discussion, right? It's not perfectly clear, but we will have a very precise algorithm that takes this decision out of our hands in a way. Um, so what we're interested in is the main eigen values and vectors. All right, so what do I mean by main? Those who determine the most important dynamics of our system, okay? So how do we get the, the support of the, the main, so to say, right? In, in order to not have to compute all of them, which would be very expensive, what do we mean by main? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a tool that we have learned just uh, a short while ago. We are going to use a reduction by the SVD. Right, remember we had this data matrix uh, Z that can be decomposed in U times sigma times V transposed. And this is what we're going to do now. We are going to say, okay, my X, uh, sorry, X is my data matrix, but we are going here, we, we, you know, we took only the first n minus one columns, so my Z matrix is decomposed into a U matrix times a sigma matrix times V transpose, right? It's a complex conjugate transpose for complex values, but we are here in the, in the real valued setting, so Z is real valued, so we will get these also to be real valued. All right, and so what does this reduction mean? We can just say um, we are going to use ZR 
which I'm just denoting by the reconstruction. So if I take u sigma v, the complete matrices, I get a lossless reconstruction. But I also need to store the entire data, so this is, or storing these three matrices is even more costly than storing the original one. So um, what I can do is I can truncate, right? I take only the first r columns of this u matrix, I take only the first r leading singular values of the sigma matrix, and I take only the first r rows of the transpose v matrix. So what I get is just a product, this r means, you know, everything greater than r is just ignored, and I get this reduced version. And so what I need to do is I need to use this reduced version in my DMD algorithm, if you wish, or one-step computation. So what I get is, uh, or first of all, what I need to do is I need to compute the pseudo-inverse of Z um, for this truncated version, right? So let's try to do this together. Um, Z pseudo-inverse, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the definition and then insert my SVD truncation. Um, first of all, I'm going to start with this and we, then we will see how we can use the truncation instead. So for this one, what's the definition? This was Z transpose to Z inverse times Z transpose, right? And so if you look at this, I can simply insert this U sigma V here, here, and here. And so this becomes a little bit nasty, but we will see some of these can be cancelled out and I will not go through all the details, but um, it's, I guess it's, 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 you're able to follow then. So transposing this product means I swap the order and transpose the individual matrices. So this D transpose becomes V times sigma transpose, but because it's a diagonal matrix, it remains sigma, times U transpose, right? So this is transpose Z times U sigma V. Sorry, V transpose inverse, and then times again this transpose, so these three terms again. V, U, uh, sorry, V, sigma, and then U transposed, okay? And so now we can exploit all these nice properties of the singular value decomposition. Remember we said that this is a unitary matrix, meaning U transpose U gives me the identity. So these two just cancel out. And then what I get is I get a sigma squared matrix. And what we will also see, um, unitary matrices, this means U transpose times U gives me the, the identity matrix. So U transpose is equal to its inverse. So U inverse is the same as U transpose. And you can use these two effects, uh, effects and further reduce it, which I'm not going to do step by step. But what you see is if you do this and then you take inverse and transpose, um, because you know you can again swap the order and to the inverse to the individual components, which means V transpose inverse becomes simply V and so on. Um, what you get in the end is a very nice expression for the pseudo inverse in terms of the SVD times U transpose, right? Um, and so what you see this is actually really nice. Um, the practical form of computing pseudo-inverses is usually this method because it's very uh, numerically efficient to do. Okay, so you have V sigma inverse U transpose. And now what we need to do is, this is just a pre-computing step for the pseudo-inverse of Z here. Right? So it's not a transpose, it's a pseudo-inverse. Um, we need to reduce the A matrix and then find that if we compute the reduced A matrix from the start, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors will be the same as for our A matrix. And this means that we would be done, okay? So step one is reduce the matrix A. So and the way we can do this is we can say our reduced matrix, let's denote this by AR now, is I'm going to comment on this in a second. It's UR transposed A times UR, okay? So what we see here is sort of a, a three-step process. Uh, let's call this lift map project.
right? Why? Because if you think of this in, in the form of a dynamic system, you insert some state in a lower dimension, R dimensional vector, you do UR times this state, which gives you a high dimensional vector, then you apply the dynamics in the high dimensional space, and then you do U transpose to this high dimensional vector that has been now been mapped forward and projected back to the low dimension. So what this AR matrix does is basically take a lower dimensional state, lift it, then do the dynamics in the original state and then project it back. Of course, this AR now restricts the dynamics to this R dimensional um, state. So it's a reduced matrix, but this is the relation and this is why I call it lift, then map and then project back. Okay, and so what you can do now is you can use this matrix and compute um, the spectrum of this. But before we do so, let's just do some calculations to make this um, yeah, that we're going to need uh, further on. So the A is, as we know here, is Z dash times Z pseudo inverse. So let's just insert this and see what comes out. This is U R transposed times Z dash times the pseudo inverse times U R. So all I've done now is replace the A matrix by its definition um, via solving this optimization problem, okay? And now you see we can do a next step. The pseudo inverse is actually this expression, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this. So I'm going to say, right, this Z pseudo inverse, what I get is UR transpose times the Z dash, which stays here times the pseudo inverse is V times sigma inverse times U transpose, remember? And what I'm doing now is I'm doing this for the reduced version. So I'm using this definition, but not on the full space, I'm using it on the reduced space. So this is VR times sigma R inverse times U R transpose times you are okay and so what you see is again the same thing we have u transpose u which remember it's a unitary matrix so what we can do is again we can cancel these two out right because just the identity matrix and we get a very nice and easily computable expression for our a matrix and so what you see is um, we have our data matrix we have a singular value decomposition um, of reduced form, so we're not computing all the singular vectors and singular values, but just the leading R1s, right? Um, and then we can use this to compute our reduced A matrix. So this is now not an N by N matrix, but this is an R by R matrix, okay? And so this one is something that we can actually compute and store, and the SVD really ensures that we have the leading components in our matrix. So this is the expression that we get. A is the, just this one here. And so we're basically done. What we need to do now is two steps. We first need to say, okay, what are now the DMD modes? Okay, so we again have to solve uh, for this an eigenvalue problem. And then we are using this to compute the uh, associated eigenvectors in the higher dimensional space. Right? And so this is going to fall a little bit of the sky now, but I'm hoping that if I leave enough space here, I, I'm going to show you what this is about. So for dynamic mode decomposition, what we're doing now is we're computing the eigen decomposition of this AR matrix, okay? So what we have is, we have this AR matrix times the eigenvector matrix is the eigenvector matrix times the eigenvalues, right? So this is just, you know, A, P equals lambda P in, in scalar form. And here this is the, the vectorial or the, the matrix formulation of this eigenvalue problem. So all of them combined. And what we're going to do now, and this is now going to fall off the sky, let's say a little bit, but um, I will show you in the last line why this makes sense. So the DMD modes that we now get is simply taking the following expression. Um, we take Z dash, the VR sigma inverse times P, okay? Another question, well, what the hell is this about? But 
um, what we can show now, and this is the, the last thing I'm going to do here, is that if we do this one here, we can show that this is actually an eigenvector of the original large dimensional matrix, okay? So this remains to be shown, and then we're basically done. We have used a small matrix, or computed a small matrix, to an eigenvalue decomposition of this smaller matrix, compute the DMD modes, so the, the eigenvectors, and now we can show, it's not my result, well, we can put the references in, in, in the, the text below the, the video, but this can be shown to be an eigenvector of the full problem, okay? So how do we do this? This is now what we're going to call our DMD mode phi, and let's insert phi into the full problem, okay? So A times phi. And what we need to be uh, finding is that this is phi times lambda, right? And then we're done. So what we can do now is I can simply insert the definitions for A and phi. And what's the definition for A? The definition for A is basically um, if I take, let's say, the AR solution, U R transpose times Z times VR times sigma R. This will give me the AR, and if I want to get the A, I have to multiply from the left with U and from the right with U transpose. Right? So what I can do is, um, and if I do U times this one, then I get uh, th these two cancel out, so what remains is the Z dash times um, VR, the reduced V matrix, times sigma R inverse, and as I said, I need to multiply from the right-hand side with U transposed in order to go from AR to, to A, right? So, well, what I mean is this one has to go here and this one has to go here in order to get from this expression to the A expression, okay? And then these cancel out again, so what I get is this one for my... Um, for my A matrix, and then I get for the phi, the DMD mode, I can just use this expression, right? So Z dash times VR times sigma R inverse times P. And so what we see, if we look very sharply, that actually the A tilde matrix is hidden in here, right? So you see U times Z dash times VR times sigma inverse R, this is exactly these four terms, right? So from here to here, this is my A tilde matrix. Oh, sorry, I called it AR. This is my AR matrix. Well, how convenient, <laughs> this one. All right, and now, <coughs> excuse me, what we've seen is that we have now um, Z times VR times sigma inverse times uh, AR. Um, and what you can show is that um, the AR times P, well, so what you get here is this is AR times P, right? So we can replace the remaining part by P times lambda due to this equality, right? So all I've written here in pink is the AR times P gives me P lambda, okay? So this is, gives me Z dash VR sigma inverse times P times lambda. Right, so Z dash VR sigma inverse. Times AR times P, which is P times lambda. Okay, and now if you look long enough to the board, we see that we're in the very happy situation that these two are actually related. See? So we had our final result. This is our phi. All right. So what we have shown is, um, this was a bit technical now, but I guess you get the idea. We have this very large matrix, which may be hard to compute. We reduce it by the SVD. We then solve an eigenvalue problem in this reduced matrix, which can be R times R, so a lot smaller. And what we have then shown is a proof that the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for, of the A matrix also satisfy the eigenvalue equation for the big A matrix. So we actually have found meaningful eigenvectors for the full A matrix given only reduced data. 
And this is now really powerful to, to study large dimensional or high dimensional systems. And so this is the one we can study once more. Um, we have seen this a few times already, right? This is the, the sea surface temperature times time series. And you see, well, this is again, you know, just two plots at, I think, um, in the winter, where there's more to the south, the temperature, and in the summer, where it's more towards the north. Uh, so uh, the, the European summer, let's say. And so what we did is uh, we looked at these points and we saw that these were roughly 44,000 points. Um, so it's a, the, the N is 44,000. And we see where we saw you know, at different times, this is the, the Southeast uh, Sea, um, where, where we see that you know, the data is really on this grid and it's very, very high dimensional. And what we then did is, we, I'm going to gloss over this because we did it before, you can use a singular value decomposition to get these um, singular vectors um, to you know, identify dominant patterns. And so this is our U vector, or the leading R columns of our U vector. And the sigma associated with it was here in this plot. So you see the earlier ones are much more important than the later ones. And now we can use this SVD to do the dynamic mode decomposition. So what you see here is I'm restricting my R to 100. So instead of a 44,000 by 44,000 matrix, I'm getting a 100 times 100 matrix. So massive reduction. Um, and here is just the formula that I've written on the board, right? A tilde, or what is my AR here, is simply this expression. It's UR, the reduced one. So I'm taking in my code U and then the first R columns, transposed, times Z dash, times VR, so the first R columns of V times sigma inverse. So it's, you know, one divided by the first leading sigma values, and then I'm creating this diagonal matrix. So, you know, inverting a diagonal matrix is very easy. You just take the, the inverse of each component. And so what I can do now is I can compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this reduced matrix, right? So it's mu are the eigenvalues, and p are the eigenvectors. We have seen in one of the previous videos that you can actually relate these eigenvalues to the uh, um, continuous time analogon, because obviously the temperature is uh, a phenomenon that is on, uh, occurs on continuous time, right? So we have to take the log of the value and then divide by delta t, and delta t is one over 12 because we have a monthly period, and what I'm looking for is the frequency in, in, in terms of years. So I multiply by 12 to get the yearly frequency, and then the, the oscillating frequency was the imaginary part of this uh, continuous eigenvalue to give me the frequency with which these dynamic modes oscillate. And now I have a spectrum, you know, the eigenvalues do not change, and the eigenvectors can be computed using this formula. Right? So all I'm doing here is I'm sorting them uh, according to their frequency, so not oscillating to oscillating quicker and quicker. Um, and so this is just a sorting thing, and then I'm computing my DMD modes according to the formula that I had here, see, Z dash times VR, so again, the first R columns of the V matrix, times the inverse of the truncated sigma matrix times P. So the eigenvector matrix of my reduced matrix AR, or in the code A tilde. Okay, and so what we get is this sort of spectrum, right? So what you see is, um, and this is also very nice related to the video that we had on, on the relation between continuous and discrete time systems, you see on the right hand side, this is the continuous spectrum and you see here is the zero. So this is the imaginary plane and you see most of the data is, well, it's basically left of the, uh, the imaginary axis. So it's a stable or a marginally stable system. And the same can be seen in this um, discrete time system where the eigenvalues are confined towards the uh, unit circle. Again, this informs us about stability in the discrete time setting. And what you can do now is you can uh, plot some of these singular vectors, okay? And so this is what I'm doing here, uh, these, uh, sorry, not singular vectors, the DMD modes. So these are my phi vectors. And I've picked some, you know, by hand because as in SVD we have an ordering, this is easily done. Here it's not so easily done because, you know, they are sorted according to the frequency, but this does not necessarily mean um, a, a terms, a pattern in, or a dominance in terms of the pattern. So this has frequency uh, zero or the, the turnover time is infinity basically. 
and you see that we again have identified the mean value, right? It has no frequency, the mean stays the mean as always. And then what we find is different patterns on different time scales, okay? So you see here on the time scale of five and one third year, as well as on three years and a bit, also on two years, we have these patterns that we identified earlier as the El Nino Southern Oscillation. So it's really a, a phenomenon where I have dynamics in the, in the Pacific Ocean that uh, occur on a, on a time scale that is longer than a year. This can range from, from three to seven, eight years, I, I don't know particularly, but this has also some sort of variance in it. And we see this clearly in the data. You know, we identify the frequencies, five, or the, the, the period uh, of this system, three years, two years, so on different time scales this occurs, but we clearly see that we have identified this pattern. And this is really astonishing if you think about it. We have a nonlinear system and we identified a matrix, or rather we identified eigenvectors of this matrix to find these patterns. And then something that we are more used to, I guess, is the fifth mode that you see here in the bottom. Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, this has a period of one year. So it's our yearly cycle. And you see really this distinction between northern and southern hemisphere because clearly with one year oscillation, the temperature will change between high temperatures or higher temperatures in northern hemisphere or higher temperature in the southern hemisphere. So we see that dynamic mode decomposition is really, really powerful in you know, using just a small computation by SVD and then reduction and computing eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a nonlinear dynamic system or an approximation of a nonlinear dynamic system. And this way we can learn a lot using techniques from linear system identification even though the original system may be nonlinear or unknown or just too high dimensional. Thank you.